welcome back to another edition of Main Street Connect's FCAC Football Fast Five. Everything you need to know about Fairfield County High School football in five minutes or less. With me, as always, is former Stanford High School football coach and professional football scout for JL Sports, Kevin Jones. Kevin, great to have you back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, let's get started. Let's recap our game of the week from last week. Stanford and Norwalk, I, I think it, we were both a little surprised at that outcome. Norwalk beat Stanford. Did Stanford's offense play that poorly, or is Norwalk's defense that good? I, I think it's always a bit of both when you ask a question like that. Stanford's offense had a poor show, and no doubt. Struggled in the first half. Norwalk's defense, to their credit, made the game one-dimensional, took away their run game, forced them to pass, and the quarterback, Brian Bodrick, did not have a good night. Two of seven in the first half, couldn't find any rhythm, really never recovered for the rest of the game. And, and offensively, Stanford just wasn't there the whole night. Norwalk's offense was really the story of this game. Uh, Delshawn Martin, quarterback, 14 of 19 for 190. Very surprising. 82 of that came on a pass that looked like, uh, uh, hopefully it was tipped to the line. It looked like the satellite was falling out of the sky that we've been hearing about all week. After that, it was all Norwalk. Stanford falls to 1-1, one one, lost their composure at the end of the game. They're going to have to really regroup if they want to have a success, uh, successful season. All right, we're two weeks in now, and we're kind of starting to see some storylines here. Which 2-0 start is more surprising to you, Norwalk's or Wilton's, who we haven't even really talked about yet? No, we haven't talked about Wilton. You know, Norwalk's 2-0 for the first time since 99, and if anybody remembers that 99 team, they were big and violent and nasty, and they were, they were pretty darn good. I don't see that same talent and firepower on this year's team, but they've got a chance to, to do a lot of things in the league this year. I look at Wilton, and we didn't talk about them at all, Big, big up front, big solid guys that can move you around. Very balanced attack. They were 160 yards rushing, 163 passing last week against St. Joe's. Uh, Sean Carroll, two touchdowns in the air, two touchdowns running. Very balanced attack. Teams with balance can cause a lot of damage going forward. So I look at Wilton and I say, Bassick this week. I think that's a win for them. Sorry, Bassick. And then I look at the rest of the schedule and I say, they've got at least seven wins that I see and they squeak out a few more 8-9, and Coach Cunningham's going to the playoffs, and that's a scary thought for a lot of people. All right, question three. We had a wild game on Friday night. Darian came all the way back to beat Ward. Did that comeback show its resiliency or its flaws more? Well, I know what the coaches are hoping for. They're hoping that it showed resilience and not all their flaws. You know, Coach Trafone had a nice speech at the end of the game where he said, you know, we were, we were very young, we lack a lot of experience, and we grew up tonight. And I think that says a lot. They were resilient. They're down 16. They scored 26 on the answer. They shut them out in the second half. They win the game. A great post-game speech, Coach for phone. but you said that you grew up and now your experience. We're about to find out because you have three road games at St. Joe's, at Trumbull, at Wilton, and we sprinkle in some home games with Staples and Canaan. So we're going to find out just how experienced they are. All right, question four. Very interesting game. Very sloppy game for New Canaan against Trinity this past Saturday. Trinity... I gotta say, played them pretty well that first half. Obviously, it became a blowout in the second half. Trinity got tired. They don't have the depth on their team. But did that first half show other teams how to game plan against New Canaan, or is Matt Milano just that too good? Matt Milano's pretty good. If you're gonna play New Canaan, they're gonna bring four quarters of football at you. And, and Trinity played a great first half, but you've gotta play the whole game. You're gonna get up on them, you better pour it on, because four quarters later, they're gonna figure out what they're doing wrong and they're gonna correct themselves. They're a very good program. He may not have had a great first half, but Matt Milano finished 25 of 38 for 296, five touchdowns, and spread the ball all over the field. That's pretty good in my estimation. That's player of the week kind of stuff in my estimation. And that brings us once again to our Main Street Connect game of the week. This Saturday, 7 p.m., Brian McMahon High School hosts Staples. Pretty much a season-defining game for McMahon already with New Canaan coming to town next week. Clearly Staples, I think, has hit the ground running, and they're, they're one of the cream of the crop teams in the FCA. McMahon stumbled out of the gate week one, got the ship upright, so to speak, th this week against Harding, 35-0. And after Staples, they're looking at New Canaan and then Wilton. So it, it's going to be one heck of a schedule. Right now, I look at McMahon, they're kind of like that wounded lion backed up in the cage. You're going to see everything this week, all the trick plays, every everything you can imagine coming from the players and coaches, and that makes them very dangerous for Staples. Staples needs to go out, play their game, win this thing. I like Staples in this game, and clearly uh, I think Staples is on a collision course with possibly McCain in that FCAC championship game with a great Week 5 matchup, possible war in the making against Trumbull in Week 5. And that'll do it for another week of high school football questions answered. Tune in next week. Until then, I'm your host, Eric Gendron.